Coming up on this episode, in 1971, for the second time, Sean Connery said he'd had enough of doing James Bond and wouldn't be back. So they were looking for someone to be the next 007. By this time, Eastwood had firmly established himself as an action star with his westerns and his first Dirty Harry film, and they wanted him to be the guy. It might have happened except for one thing. Bond is British. Obviously, Clint Eastwood is not. Blimey. Thanks for stopping by I Did Not Know That Classic TV Edition. Please like and subscribe. Can I have just a little bit of time to think about it? Do it now. Before he got his role in a TV series, Eastwood really struggled to get parts. Burt Reynolds claims that he and Eastwood were released from their universal contracts at the same time. Supposedly, the studio rep said Eastwood's tooth was chipped and he refused to get it fixed, he talked too slow, and his Adam's apple was too large. When Reynolds asked why he was getting fired, they said, you can't act. As they were leaving, Reynolds told Clint that he felt sorry for him and Eastwood asked him why. He said, I said, I can learn to act. You'll never get rid of that Adam's apple. <laughs> <laughs> Clint Eastwood finally got his big break playing Rowdy Yates in the TV show Rawhide. While he wasn't the main star, at least it made his face familiar to American viewers. As the series was winding down in 1965, he was offered a role in a Western movie called A Fistful of Dollars. But it wasn't an American film that was going to be shot in Europe. Back in those days, they were called Spaghetti Westerns because they had Italian directors and producers. They were filmed in Spain, which doubled pretty well for the Old West. But it turns out Clint wasn't their first choice. He wasn't even their second choice. And apparently not even their third, fourth, fifth, or even their ninth choice. They asked Henry Fonda, and he turned them down. Then they asked Charles Bronson, but he didn't like the script. Then it was offered to Henry Silva, Rory Calhoun, Tony Russell, Steve Reeves, Ty Harding, James Coburn, and Richard Harrison. They all declined. But Richard Harrison suggested they might try Clint Eastwood. They did, and Clint took the job for $15,000 and an 11-week trip to Europe. He filmed the movie between seasons of Rawhide. And then he made two other films, A Few Dollars More in 1965 and The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly in 1966. What I didn't realize was that the films weren't released in the United States until 1967. I think it shocked everyone in February of 1967 when A Fistful of Dollars became the number one film in America. The trilogy of films ended up being big hits and changed people's perception of Eastwood and his future forever. It established him as an international star, and now he was the one who could decide what films he'd be in. In 1971, for the second time, Sean Connery said he'd had enough of doing James Bond and wouldn't be back. So they were looking for someone to be the next 007. By this time, Eastwood had firmly established himself as an action star with his westerns and his first Dirty Harry film and they wanted him to be the guy. It might have happened except for one thing. Bond is British. Obviously, Clint Eastwood is not. Blimey. So either Eastwood would have had to fake the accent or just use his American accent, which would have been odd since he's supposed to be a British secret agent. American television actually faced the same problem when they produced the very first on-screen appearance of James Bond with 1954's Casino Royale, and Bond was played by an American actor, Barry Nelson. Look, Mr. Bond, as you should know by now, I, I'm quite without mercy, and if you continue to be that obstinate, I, I'll have to torture. You will be tortured to the edge of madness. You're an ugly little man. Why don't you stop talking? All right. How they handled it was to make Bond an American agent. But 
Eastwood declined the offer to play 007. I was also offered pretty good money to do James Bond if I would take on the role. This was after Sean Connery left. My lawyer said they would love to have you. But to me, while that was somebody else's gig, that's Sean's deal. It didn't feel right for me to be doing it. Eastwood said he was offered pretty good money to do James Bond if he'd take on the role. Ironically, his buddy Burt Reynolds said he'd been offered the role too, but he also turned it down. Truth, justice, and make my day, punk. A few years after this, Eastwood said that the head of Warner Brothers came to him and proposed that he play the lead in the Superman film that they were planning on making. But Clint said he wasn't interested in that either. He said, Superman? Oh, that's not for me. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's for somebody, but not for me. I always liked characters that were more grounded in reality. Maybe they do super things or more than human things, like Dirty Harry. He has a knack for doing crazy things or the Western guys, but still, they're not Cape Crusaders. A few other roles or films that Eastwood considered but turned down were John McClane in Die Hard, a version of an older Batman called The Dark Knight, and Agent K in Men in Black, which I think he would have done very well with. Incredibly, at age 92, Eastwood is getting ready to shoot his next film called Juror Number 2. Well, that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for checking out my channel. I hope you found something interesting in this episode. I never knew any of that.